Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another moment of this program, a New Direction podcast. Today, with me, I have my brethren here, our brother, Savior. Good morning, everyone. I have Sister Dugo. Good morning. I have brother, Uche. Good morning, all. And I have Sister Yuti. Good morning to you all. My name is Brother Kufre. We bring a very interesting topic today for discussion, and that topic is Jesus. Who is Jesus? But we are not going to discuss as usual. We are going to play a voice note that we want everyone watching to listen to the voice note. We will also listen to the voice note because there is something very important that we need to take from the voice note. In this program, if you have been following us, we have said that before humanity can get help, that is coming from the spirit that generated all of us. That spirit must provide a first route to dwell in, to guide humanity. I also believe that that is the reason why we have men that we call preachers, pastors, prophets that we go to, so that we can hear from them the word of God. But like we keep saying, whosoever that carry that word in the midst of a generation where men are dwelling with sin, that person would be the God that we all seek for. Because the world need to be with God before humanity can get the proper guide that will lead to the solution that we all seek for. So today, we'll go right to the, to the topic that we have for you. And like I said before, that topic is who Jesus is. But before we play the voice note that we want everyone to listen to, I need to bring this to our viewers. You know, wherever we go to preaching, you hear somebody say, Jesus is calling you. Come, Jesus is calling you. But whenever that person is making that statement, you can't see Jesus anywhere. You can't see somebody at the back of the person. The person you see is the one calling you. So if I am to come to a man who is telling me, come, Jesus is calling you, it is demanded that such a person would point me to the person standing that is called Jesus or the person calling me should be the Jesus. So that's why today we all have in our lives that Jesus is the son of God. That's what we have. So, but I don't know about my, my brethren here. So I want to ask my brethren or you outside there, you also take your own portion. So I want to ask, whose son is Jesus? Son According to our belief, whose son is Jesus? He's the he son, of, the son of, God. of God. Jesus is the son of God. Yes. Whose son are you? <laughs> whose son are you? Whose son are we supposed to be? See, it's funny. Because whenever you ask somebody this question, nobody will tell you that right, I'm a son of God. The highest thing you can see is I'm a child of God. Or somebody's supposed to say either I'm a son of God or I'm a son of the devil. But we don't say that. We just laugh over it or we say we are children of God. It's only Jesus that is the son of God. Yes, according to them. But is Jesus truly the son of God? So that's why we have this voice note that we want everyone to listen to. So I would like us to go direct to the voice recording and listen to it. If we have anything to say at the end of it, when we come back, we can do that. So. This is another moment. But this moment will be a little bit different. Because first of all, we want to use this moment to put out a disclaimer. A disclaimer in the sense that will make you understand the purpose of why we are sending out this information that we are sending out. Because there is what we don't want anybody to believe that it is meant to achieve. And that disclaimer is simple. This information is not getting to you to make you know what you you can do to yourself where you are and stay there to achieve it it will never do that so don't think that we are giving you information like we have listened to a lot of how other informations are passed even though they are passed by the same medium of the 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 media or the social media platform what you need to know about this information is that it is intended to make you 
move emphasis on what we have always said go and find him you cannot use the information on yourself it it will not work it's not like reading a book and applying principles of the book to your life and getting it work no we are only telling you in emphasis that whatever you stay there to do will not work that is our disclaimer so that you don't feel that we are giving you information that you use to make yourself great better and all that no the only one that will make you better is the one to whom it is given to make everybody in the world, every leadership in the world, every human being under the leadership of this world better because it is until the government that is in the hands of men is handed into the shoulder of this one, which is our responsibility to inform even our so-called elites to know so that they don't crumble with us. That is our responsibility. And therefore, in addition to that disclaimer, we use this moment to discuss one component that may also help enlighten us a little bit. And that component is Jesus. Who is Jesus? What is Jesus? And where is Jesus? Was there a historic Jesus? In other words, a man that is called Jesus that was born on the face of this earth in Jerusalem, in Israel, somewhere in Bethlehem or Galilee, whatever. Was there such a person? The answer is no. But the answer doesn't form the basis of what you should know as the truth. Because you get answers which are true, but they don't make the change that forms the truth. Because when you get what is true and it makes the change in you, then that fulfills what the truth is. Because the truth is a person. That's why the chosen one who will be in our midst is said to be the one that will say, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So the way is somebody, the truth is somebody, and the life is somebody. So if you want to have life, it is him that you find to give you life. If you want to have the truth, it is him that you have. You do not know the truth as a knowledge in your head. You know the truth as the person, knowing the person who is the truth and him giving you guide on how to walk and the truth that he is, is making what his instructions are to you to make the change in your life. That's how you know the truth. So we want to get into the Jesus thing. If you watch the internet information very closely, you discover that a lot has come up with this concept. A lot has come up with this uh, awareness, this discovery that there was no historic Jesus. It's true. But those people saying it, have they just have an instinct in their system, just as is the spirit that is manipulating everything because when it's time for him to pass his message he moves men he puts it in men to say things out so it's time so when he's preparing the way for the god he's introducing in our midst he makes men to say things he reveals things that are meant to prepare that part for that one he designed to come and conclude everything so you hear those men all over they are there and they will say, there is no historic Jesus. There's no such thing as Jesus. A man was born in Jerusalem and he was murdered. And he's a son of God who was murdered on this earth to take care of, to be able to, to, to save the world. Listen, first of all, let me introduce this, this piece of, of awareness, consciousness, piece of uh, knowledge. Let me just let me just use the the privilege to to pass it on to impart it on that if 
the spirit of creation wants to save a people. He doesn't need to kill anybody. He doesn't need to say his son will have to go and be nailed on the cross to die on behalf of others. Listen, the one he is subjecting to that, does he not need safety too? Does he not need to stay alive too? You will say he wants to show. If you would want to now argue it in your own sense, you will say because he is God, he is powerful. He, he used the spirit of the, his power to show us that even when he, the, the man is able to die, he can resurrect, he can rise back. But let me ask you, if he is so powerful, does he need to do that to show us that he is powerful? If he keeps all of us alive without anybody dying, won't we know that he is powerful? Why does he have to do that by subjecting somebody through that level of pain? That's not what he did. And what he, he, what he has done, you are going to see from the little explanation, the brief explanation today, that it is not one person he subjects to all that. It's all of us. So who is this Jesus? So that you now know when you are screaming and shouting, in the name of Jesus, you see how naive you are. You are naive. You don't even know what it is that you are shouting at. There's no such foundation that is set even in the Bible that we carry. There is no such thing. There is no such thing. But you see, because he keeps us busy by deceit, so that we'll be busy, and he makes us think we are doing something very important until because he doesn't want us to go to get the real thing to the source of it. Because the source of it, the real thing is reserved for the one that is chosen, that he chooses to now show us that we are wrong, for which we 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 will we will we will now have to swallow our pride and swallow our arrogance to be able to admit, yes, obviously we are wrong. There's no no denying that fact. So who is this Jesus? In simple terms, Jesus, like in one of those, as in one of those contents, one of those expositions, one of those information components was analyzed to us as meaning the one that, that it means, Jesus means saving his people from their sins in john uh, in matthew not john it's in matthew chapter one or matthew chapter two somewhere around there where he says when the, the name jesus colon in front of it there's an explanation for he shall save his people from their sin that's because that's the meaning of jesus therefore the jesus being a name and the name being an influence means the person who will bear that influence will be doing the work of saving the people from their sins. But beyond that, what is Jesus? Jesus, first of all, being a work of saving, it's a name that influences everybody on the face of the earth. Let me give you a simple illustration. It is existing in our claims. When we say Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that's because only Jesus the Christ, the one that is Christ, that is the Son of God. It is not that Jesus is the Son of God. It is not Jesus alone, one Jesus that is the Son of God. Because everybody is a product of the source of the Spirit. Nobody came here by himself. But, the mystery behind the performance of the name Jesus, which is why, apart from the fact that it's identifiable by Christians, who are the majority of those who use the expression, the blood of Jesus, that is because blood makes you related. So when you are crying the blood of Jesus, it's because by Jesus, we are all related. So Jesus is the spiritual connection that the spirit of creation used to keep every human being he created upon the face of this earth within his grasp. 
So you can't escape anything the Spirit wants to do to you because Jesus is the connection between you and the mystery of the Spirit of the Lord. So when he, he, when he, he initiates, when he brings God, when God is bathed in the midst of men and he gives his authority to God, God being the first one that he will choose to function in the office of the authority of God, which makes that one that is coming to do that to be Jesus the Christ. So God never allows his work to be done by anybody else. He's the one. He can call himself his son. That is the product. When you say this person, when you give birth to a child and you say, this is my son, what you are saying is this is my product. The son of God is the product of God, is the product of the spirit. That is his son. Even people call their company ideas, an idea that gives rise to a, a prosperous uh, material resources. A company that gives, a company idea you started small. It gave birth to a, a conglomerate, a big establishment. You say, this was my, my child. It's my son. You call an idea his son. Why wouldn't God call his own product, his own idea, his son? Is that strange? But the, the, the idea of Jesus, the technique of Jesus, that is a technique he used to make everybody his. So whether you call yourself a Muslim, Christian, unbeliever, atheist, Hindu, whatever, Jesus is the mystery significance that he used to keep everybody within his reach. So when it's time to spiritually access every man to face whatever consequences he has planned or whatever redemption he has planned, it's through that medium, Jesus. So when you hear Jesus, 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 you are talking about yourself. Ah, uh ah, -uh, can't you see? You are talking about yourself. There is no Jesus outside your belonging to the spirit that made you. So when you say Jesus is the son of God, and we want to now take that literally to say, okay, only Jesus is the son of God and you are not Jesus. So whose son would you be? You won't be a child of God anymore. You will be a child of something else. But as soon as you realize that, it will be strange for you to actually claim the child of anything else outside God. Say, no, you too, you are a child of God. You too, you are Jesus. So Jesus being the child of God, the son of God, means everybody on the face of the earth is Jesus. Because nobody will accept to be a child of anything else. So understand that now. That the concept of Jesus is spiritual. And it is the program that the spirit of creation has used to connect every human soul to his grip. To his grip. So you cannot escape. So when you stay there and say, I don't believe in God, that's your business. Your not believing in God has nothing. It has nothing to do with what he has to do over you. You cannot change that. You cannot use the fact that you don't believe in him to say he has no access to you. He has no power over you. Uh-uh. Oh, you are mistaken. That's a mess that you've caused for yourself. So Jesus, in summary, is everybody on the face of the earth. What is therefore the mystery behind the crucifixion of Jesus? I will tell you. I will tell you. Look at the picture that I've just painted for you right now. Jesus is everybody, including you. You cannot hang the Son of God on the cross. Everybody that he created, based on the fact that the first program is designed that whatever you do will crumble, he made sure that that is a crucifixion process upon every man. So every man has a cross he has to carry, but he doesn't know that. That is the trick of the spirit. So when you think that the book he wrote, you know, when you read the Bible, he wrote it so that when you read it, it will look like it is a people in the world. As against one person somewhere and then God somewhere. No. That's what he wants you to see. That's how he created it. That's how he made it. He's a fantastic master planner. He will catch you right on your tracks. 
He made you. You didn't make him. So the significance of the cross that you seem to be looking at as if the son of God came to this world. You are the one that came to this world. It's not any of his son. He, he brought you into this world. But know that you are stubborn. You are arrogant. You would, he will put you to all the tests. And he knows you are very proud. You want to access the things that he hasn't given to you. So he does what he does to subject you to every man, every manner of pain that you suffer by either one another or yourselves alone. So he puts out a structure and crucifies your brain, your skull. That's why crucifixion took place in the in the skull where your brain is. He he twatted it, he twisted it. So you won't get anything clear as you read it. So when you read the Bible, it's like he brought his son into this world and men held him and crucified him and men were laughing at him. And it's you, it's you. If you look at the situation now, you have been crucified in your skull by the spirit that made you so that the things he has kept hidden from you will stay hidden. Therefore, Whatever you have to work for and refuse to allow him to give you some correction to it, those things will nail you to a cross. Every one of you. You cannot nail the Son of God on the cross and be laughing at him. It is not possible. He will nail you on the cross. And let me make this clear to all of you. It is easier for the Spirit as one, one, to nail the whole world, the whole population of billions of people on a cross than all the billions of people to come together to nail him one on any cross. It's absolutely impossible. I will repeat that thing again. I will repeat what I've just said. And listen and listen good. I said... It is far easier for God as one person by the spirit that is behind him as a creator to crucify everybody together on a cross than the people thinking that they can come together and crucify him on any cross. Get that straight. So the crucifixion you read about in the Bible is a, is a fictional thing that he created in your memory. That cannot happen. That the people of a world that he created and brought were able to come together and hold his son and nail on the cross. It's impossible. But what you don't know is that every cry of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is just you. Is you. There is no Jesus that came and walked this face of the earth and did all those things that you said he did. If not, this world would not be the way it is. But it's because he had given you something to occupy you. So you are not too, too clear enough to access what he doesn't want you to access. Take for instance, you talk about Jerusalem, Israel, as the people of God. The spirit cannot choose a people in the midst of all those billions to favor. No, he will only bring himself, which is fair enough to use one to correct all, not to choose a number of people. Can't you now see how that place is? Does that place look like a place that is identifiable by God? They depend on a country like America to supply weapons that they will fight all people, all enemies around them. Does, does God fight with Weapons of carnal minds. Why can't you see now that there is light? You were left in the dark. In the dark. There was darkness in the face of the deep. So in your deep in your soul is darkness. That is why when you see the movement of the expressions of the Bible in Genesis, it says, he drove away man from his garden from that beginning on, from, the, from the east to the west. You see, to the west. 
from the east. He drove the garden is in the east. He drove man from the east to the west. The east is where the sun rises. So man's life existed in the west. That is why when you talk about western education, it is not education that came from the white man. It's because the entire education of humanity is in the dark. It's western. Western. Because man's existence was driven down to the west when the sun had gone down. When the sun rises in the east, there is light. The brightness, you see what you do. But he drove you to the west where the sun has set. Is a significance of the fact that the entire existence of mankind is exhibited under the dark. That is why the education is Western. Western education does not imply education from the white man or the Western region of the world. No, it is education of humanity under the dark age. It's spiritual. That is why everything that man invents has the capacity to destroy man. So it is until God, who is light, and will be brought to humanity by the one who created humanity to, to make everybody. Well, you see me, I've driven into another section of it from just Jesus. Because the issues are numerous. And that's why you cannot use this information to make anything out of yourself. You can only use this information to move to the one who will make everything out of you. So don't sit there and think you are getting information. You are getting information. And what are you doing with the information? Because there's nothing getting the information and keeping with you can do for you. The only thing it can do for you is to help you and grant you a direction where you'll be able to seek to find where this one that is spoken about is so you can actually see for yourself. Don't be told. And that's how our disclaimer from the beginning in this session is saying we are not just trying to tell you what you sit there to know. We are informing you so that you move to go find out for yourself. So we are not speaking on your behalf. You are, we are giving you information that will help you go make inquiry to make something of this information on your behalf. So we are not representing you. We have already represented ourselves and seen for ourselves. And so we are passing out information that is so vital, something so, so important that it should be shared. So you don't sit there and think you have information that you can use to apply. Where in every of the explanation that you've gotten can you use and apply to yourself? Where? It is he that has it. And we were made to be available for him to make us. So, if God has not made you, you are still a dead man. There is a session. There's one of the bits of, of one of the sessions as we began that dealt with the, the issue of God not being the one who brought us into this world. Yes. But the one we have always been calling as God, 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 is not who God is. That is the Lord. But the, the instincts we have is about God. Because the Lord, in his program, decided, he had planned as a program, that it is God he's going to use to help us. Our help is with God. It's not with the Lord. So, it is God that the instincts have been made in our hearts to know of, even though we've not seen him. And that is why even calling him by not knowing, by not having seen him, is enough to let you know that it will not be him that you are actually calling. You don't even know who you are calling. So we now have the impression that the spirit that brought us is our God. No, the spirit that brought us is our Lord. The one that will help us is our God who he will bring to us. And that is his program. It's not ours. It's not our program. It's his program. Therefore, Jesus is actually the significance of every human body, every human person in the world as a child of the spirit of creation that is subject to the help of God. So that significance that we have just interpreted into one, what looks like a prayer, that's not a prayer. That's not what prayer is. But you take it as a prayer to be screaming, in the name of Jesus, listen, 
in the name of Jesus, is still calling on you that is dead. It's you. You. You are the Jesus. Because now, Jesus is supposed, according to you, to be the one who will do the work of saving mankind from their sins. So you that is carrying that mantle of, in the name of Jesus, and it's you. Are you not saying you are the one to save the world? Why don't you leave it to the one who has to save the world? Because the one who has to save the world will not be shouting in the name of himself. In the name of myself. That is what Jesus is. So when you are shouting in the name of Jesus, and Jesus is you, everybody is Jesus, because of the significance of what the Spirit has made. So when in your subconscious you are shouting in the name of Jesus, you are actually saying in the name of myself. I can do this for you. I can do that for you. How far? How far is it working? How far? But you know what the deceit has made? It gives you a job. It makes you make a lot of merchandise out of it. You make a lot of money. You have a lot of influence. But it's just because he lets you have it. Because that's how busy he wants you to be. And so if he wants to create confusion in the midst of humanity, he uses them. He doesn't bring any other thing in. He just uses them. And to remind you for the last, for the last bit of this session, I want to ask you, if we all came from one source, Adam and Eve, let's say the first male and the first female, let's, let's not use names. Let's say there was an appearance that he made by virtue of the power of his creation to make a pair of humans male and female appear on the face of this earth which didn't need anybody to be pregnant to give birth to anybody and it is from there everybody came from how would you say we are not all related that if you go to so so, -so family or so so extension so so country to marry you are not marrying your relation and you say how did they come up with different colors ah uh ah -uh. what are you talking about if a company can make a product in different forms, how can God bring humanity by way of even within themselves bringing out children and he can make them come out in different colors and different forms? What are you talking about? Is anything too hard for the Lord? You want to see a grave that is the grave of a Jesus that never existed. He will create a grave for you to go and see. If you have designated the children of Israel in Jerusalem as the one where Jesus was born, and he wants to make that a center of focus for a distraction enough for the world to wait for when he wants to make, make a mystery out of it, would he not create a grave there? Would he not create all the signs that show that what is hard for him to do? You say you see, you see uh, demons, and you see he can create demons in his world if you want to see demons. There's nothing too hard for him to do. I just hope that this piece of information that we keep putting together will form the puzzle, will give you the clarity of how the puzzle was designed from the foundation of the world, for which you were not there. So why don't you stop your arguments, your pride? What you know does not count anymore because he that is light is coming to show the light for which we were all given to know in parts. I just hope that at this point, in this piece, you had a good listening. Wow. You have a good listening? Of course. <laughs> that is serious. That is very serious. Well, I don't know about you people. For me, I think I've heard a lot. I've heard a lot. And from what I just received now, I don't think I have much to say. But like I said, I don't know about you people. So if anybody have anything to say on this, the person is free. But I don't have much to say. You know why? It's something that he said that is, is, is very, I don't know how to put it, is, is very deadly. Deadly in the sense that it is shown that clearly that there is no man that is of himself. No wonder it said in that Jeremiah 10, 23, that a man's way is not of himself. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm. how can then man understand his step? So it means every of us are occupied with something. 
But like somebody will say today, that the spirit that we have is the Holy Ghost, is the Holy Spirit, is the... I don't know where we, that we are getting that from. Because it shows clearly that if there is something in man, that spirit that is in us is the spirit of man. And that's why we have the limitation that we have. But from the piece of this information, you can see clearly that it is because of that significance of that spirit that all of us now become a product of the spirit. Because he generated all of us. Yes. Do you understand that? Yes. From everything that we are hearing. So anytime we sit down to call Jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, by the talking, you see that it doesn't add anything. I used to tell somebody, if you do a prayer and you somersault from upstairs to downstairs all in the name of pray, uh, prayer and things doesn't work, that should show you whether things look like it's working in our eyes. That should show us that that cannot be God. Because God would never want you to fry bread before he can do something. Well, all he just need you to do is, if you can keep to his command, his instruction, and fulfill obedience, that's when things can happen. But at the same time, where will you keep the instruction from when you have not seen him? To keep the instruction. That's why we talked about the command the last time. So that's why I said, for me, in this piece of information, I don't have much to say. So if anybody listening to us out there, watching us, you need to understand that what we are here for, like you have heard from that voice note. We are not, we are not here to send a message to people that they will stay wherever they are to use that message and think they can use it to make their, themselves righteous. No, that's not why we are here. We are here for a good news, and the good news that the world will receive is to know where God has been choosing to bet from. That is where God has been born into. I don't know why, anytime we make this statement, somebody think, how can you say God is born? Listen, it's only God that can born into the world. We as men cannot born because we've already been produced dead. So there's no room for being born again. So the only room we have is to resurrect when God is in our midst to show us the mystery that we need to follow to come alive. Yes. Which is you, why he said, though you were dead, yet shall we yet live. Shall live. Yeah. So that is why in this piece of information, everyone needs to understand that whatever thing you are hearing from this audio, you need to understand that it's more important than even as we are sitting down now and discussing. That's why there's nothing much to discuss. But if you have been following this program, this podcast, and you have any question that you want to ask, any inquiry that you want to, to make, we have our email addresses on the screen. Send us a mail. This is a movement. This is not one somebody denomination. No. That's why we keep saying that we are not Christians. We are not Muslim. We are not pagans. We are not Hindu. We are just a people who are who were privileged to have in contact with these personalities that we keep talking to you about. So it will be a grateful thing if you can make your move to find out where is this personality that you people talked about so that we can test it to see whether what has been said in this program is true or not. Because you can't use the, 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 the information we give you and analyze between yourself to conclude that the information we pass to you is wrong. Ask yourself if you conclude what that is wrong. What if it's right? Is right? And at the end of the day, I pass my wrong judgment to myself and put myself in the place that will not have failed me that opportunity. So that's why we say, get up and move because this is the time. That is if you care for our dying world and also the dying people that you have around you. So make your move. If you also want to be a part of our live discussion, send us a mail through the email addresses. We'll get back to you by sending you a link where you will join us in one of our platform that we use we use google meets skype and zoom meeting so you are good to go but our procedure does not require any monetary charge all you need is to have your internet working then you are good to go see you again next time